This is a story of Norwegian Air Sweden Flight 4311. On the 23rd of May 2022, an Airbus A320 operated by Airhub Airlines was on the way from Stockholm Arlanda Airport to Paris' Charles de Gaulle Airport. The plane took off and flew the route with no issues whatsoever. But as the plane got closer to Charles de Gaulle, they were assigned the 27 right approach and the ILS for 27 right was out of commission. So they had to fly what's known as an RNP approach or a required navigation performance approach. As the pilots prepared for the landing, the pilots tuned into the ATIS and it was as follows. Transition level 70, wind 280 at 10 knots, visibility 10 kilometers, broken clouds at 1500 feet, temperature 19 degrees Celsius, dew point 14 degrees Celsius, QNH 1001 HPA. The pilots discussed the approach as heavy rain pounded the airplane. Soon, the A320 was in contact with the intermediate controller who decided to take them down to 6,000 feet. She said, Red nose 4311, descend, descend, 6,000 feet, 1011. The crew read back their clearance and then took the plane down. The controller took them down to 5,000 feet after that and then cleared them for the RNP approach. Descend 5,000 feet, QNH 1011, cleared full RNP approach, 27 right, red nose 4311, came the reply from the captain. The controller then turned her attention away from the Norwegian plane to an easy jet plane. As flight 4311 reached the final approach fix, or the point at which a plane must be straight, level, and at a prescribed height and speed for an approach, the pilots changed the plane into the final approach mode. The jet was then handed off to the North Tower. As the jet cut through the fog, clouds, and the rain, the pilots got a radio transmission from the tower. Bonjour, red nose 4311, you are number one, wind 260 degrees, 12 knots, runway 27 right, cleared to rand. As the plane kept descending, the pilots were keeping their eyes peeled for any side of the runway and the airport. As the primary flight displays countered down the altitude, the pilots still could not see the runway. In the tower, a warning went off. The MSAW, or the Minimum Safe Altitude Warning, was triggered for Flight 4311. Flight 4311 was at 919 feet at 1.5 nautical miles from the threshold of the runway. This was too low for a normal approach. In the cockpit, the pilots still could not see anything out the window. They should be able to see the runway at this point, but still nothing. And so they decided to go around as they hit their decision altitude. The controller then transmits, Red nose 4311, I had a ground proximity alert. Are you okay? Do you see the runway? No response was received to this message. In the cockpit, the captain disengaged the autopilot and the captain pulled back on the stick. As he was doing this, the captain advanced both throttles to max power. The engines roared to life and they stopped the descent of the plane just in time. The plane was just six feet away from hitting the ground when it started to climb away. The pilots kept pulling back on the stick and keeping the plane in a nose high attitude as they climbed away from the near disaster that they just had. The pilots let the controllers know that they were going around, but everyone involved was unaware just how close Flight 4311 had come to certain death. As all of this was happening, the North Tower got word that the South Tower crew had not turned the approach lights on for runway 27 right. So he switched the approach lights on for runway 27 right. After all of this, the altitude alert and the lights not being on in the North Tower, the controller was replaced with someone else. A fresh set of eyes should be able to guide Flight 4311 back, right? The tower controller handed Flight 4311 off to the arrival controller, and they were once again given the RNP approach to runway 27 right. The controller cleared the plane to land, and the crew now inquired if the approach lights were on. The controller assured them that the lights were on, and so the crew started approach number two. The crew again turned on the approach mode, and the plane flew into the clouds and rain, hoping to find the runway this time. Just like last time, an MSAW alert was triggered in the tower. Red nose 4311, I've got a terrain alert, are you okay? The tower asked. In the cockpit, since the lights were turned on, the pilots could see the runway this time around, and it was nowhere near where they were expecting to see the runway. The pilots knew that they were too low, and so the captain pulled back on the stick to arrest their descent, and then the pilots took the plane in for a safe landing. Flight 4311 had just come six feet away from crashing into the French countryside. 
Usually for a video like this, I make a joke about how low the plane came by referring to the height of a celebrity. But in this case, the viewer, you, might be six feet. If you're six feet tall, stand up. That's how close an Airbus A320 was from hitting the ground. If the pilots had not started the go-around when they did, this plane would have slammed into the ground and we'd be making a very different video right now. So then, the big question is, how could this happen? Well, if you've been paying attention, you already know. The clues are all there, so if you know, drop it down in the comments below. But before we get to all of that, let's talk about exactly what the pilots were trying to do here. Since the ILS had been out of commission for a couple of days, the pilots were carrying out the RNP approach. The plane was not equipped to carry out an RNP approach using satellites for both vertical and lateral guidance. So the pilots were relying on the barometric altimeter to give them vertical guidance. The altimeter was showing them their altitude above the mean sea level. For the altimeter to be calibrated properly, the pilots needed something known as a Q&H value. If you put in the wrong Q&H value, the altimeter is going to calculate the wrong altitude for your airplane. Now, here's the big mistake. When the intermediate controller gave the crew of Flight 4311 their Q&H value, she made a crucial mistake. She told them that their Q&H was 1011 instead of 1001. What this meant was that the wrong Q&H value was punched into the altimeter and the plane was 280 feet lower than the displayed altitude. So if your altimeter says that you are 5,000 feet above mean sea level, then your plane is actually 4,720 feet above mean sea level. Therefore, if you're at your decision height, you are actually 280 feet below your decision height. So this crew had been flying their approaches well below the standard glide path. Sadly, without the ILS, and since the plane was in heavy rain, the crew had no way of knowing this. Fortunately for the crew, what saved them was the operator's rule book. You see, with the plane in the conditions that it was, the operator mandated that you had to add 50 feet to your decision altitude. And in this case, the crew made the decision to go around at that new decision height. Even with that additional 50 feet, the plane made it out with only 6 feet to spare. Then, it stands to reason that without the operator's special 50 feet rule, Flight 4311 would have ended as a smoldering wreck short of runway 27 right in Paris. So all of that happened, and then they went around. And then the controller gave them the correct Q&H, but the first officer read back the Q&H that they were using on the plane, and he did not catch the mistake. So the pilots lined up for another approach with the incorrect Q&H set. But this time, since the approach lights were on, the pilots were able to land the plane visually. Digging into why the controller made such a mistake, the investigators think that the quote unquote musicality of the numbers that she was dealing with might have had something to do with it. The flight number was 4311 and the Q&H was 1001. You can kind of see how a mistake can creep in. Besides, a lot of controllers did not know how important QNHs were for barometric approaches. So it is possible that she might not have paid a whole lot of attention to that part of the clearance. Quote, because of the nature of her work, the controller's provision of the QNH may have become a routine action, and being unaware of the fundamental role of the QNH for barometric approaches, as indicated by many controllers in their statements, the ITM controller's attention was not particularly focused on the accuracy of this information, both when it was transmitted and when listening to the readback. End quote. This theory kind of holds some water because the intermediate controller also gave the incorrect Q&H value to an EasyJet plane, but she used the right one with the Air France plane. But for that Air France transmission, she was speaking in French, so the crew of Flight 4311 would not have gotten their mistake because they didn't speak French. Another mystery is the fact that the crew never responded to the controller's transmission asking them if they were okay after the first altitude alert. The pilot said that this is because they just didn't hear it. The pilots were in a stressful lab environment, and with the wipers being on full blast, they might have just missed it. Interviews also showed that they missed the radio altimeter callouts. The pilots recalled that they only heard the 2500 and 1000 feet callouts. The system was working fine, so this plane was counting down the altitude, and the pilots did not catch it at all. 
If you're into aviation, and if you're watching this channel, you probably are, you might be asking yourself, if the plane was in such danger, why didn't the terrain warning system activate? Well, despite the plane being just six feet off the ground, the system was working as designed. Since the plane was configured for landing and at a standard rate of descent, the TAWS or the terrain awareness and warning system was partially inhibited. The premature descent alert submodule of TAWS has an inhibition zone right before the runway so as to not set it off every time the plane was landing. And since this plane's software was old and did not use satellite positioning, no terrain alert was generated. So many things had to go wrong on this flight for this plane to get so close to the ground. But someone was smiling over them that day. If you want to watch another A320 that came close to crashing, I will have a video up on screen right now. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. I will catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe.